DC might have a reputation for raising their continuity to nothing but ash every five years or so, but there's no denying the company have been able to develop certain characters organically along the way too. Not every hero has started out as a beloved character, while others who did would still undergo years worth of development before turning into the fan favorites they are today. Given how we got into the habit of discussing characters we used to hate but now love, sorry Thor, what better time to look over those DC characters who got off to a rough start but then managed to block them into something beautiful later down the line. So, I'm Ewan, this is What Culture Comics, and here are 10 awful DC superheroes who were successfully reinvented. Number 10, Superman why he was awful. Here are some of the powers Superman has shown up with in his early days in the comic books that he likely only used the once and probably forgot about. 1947 Superman number 45 includes the hero possessing both telepathy and shape-shifting powers. These examples don't even mention the times that he was able to use super ventriloquism, the ability to throw his voice across great distances, or his super horse named Comet, who was evidently sentient and in love with Lois Lane. How he was fixed. A lot of the work here was done for DC by Crisis on Infinite Earths, which reset the DC universe in 1986. This helped simplify much of Superman's continuity, removing many of the sillier aspects of his background. Gone was the super horse and any remnants of the nonsensical powers he previously possessed. The limits of his powers still aren't overly clear, but we can now list at least the powers he does possess, without fear that next week he'll manifest the ability to project tiny supermen from his hands. Number 9, Aqualad why he was awful. Aquaman himself sees no end to the ridicule thrown his way. If anyone expected his teenage sidekick to fare any better, they'd be wrong. He is born with purple eyes, which is evidently a huge deal on Atlantis, causing him to be banished as a baby to live outside the city, by himself, in the ocean. Consequently, he develops an intense fear of schools of fish, which seems somewhat inconvenient when you live in the sea, but I digress. Presumably, he can handle them in small numbers, mind you. It's just that when there's a lot of them, Garth tends to freak out. How he was fixed. Luckily, his place has been taken by a much cooler character in 2010's Young Justice animated TV show, who was promptly integrated into the comics months after his successful animated debut. Son of Aquaman's villain Black Manta, his Atlantean name is Calderon. The character made the transition into comics during the Brightest Day storyline the same year he was first introduced, replacing Garth, who, unfortunately, died in that very same story. Number 8, Green Lantern why he was awful. When Green Lantern was originally printed, he wasn't a member of the Green Lantern Corps. He was simply a man that discovered a magical lantern and a ring, and donned a green cape over a red shirt. The original version of the character was called Alan Scott. The basics of the character will be familiar to modern Green Lantern fans, but he finds the lantern completely randomly after surviving a train crash. It's not a space cop, but rather a magical superhero along the lines of Shazam. His power is also completely powerless against organic matter, meaning he can be defeated by wood how he was fixed. Hal Jordan was introduced in 1959 as the new science fiction age Green Lantern. Granted his ring by a dying space cop, the character became iconic and a mainstay of the DC universe. Not only has he been around since the 40s, the Green Lantern core is one of the coolest elements of the DC universe. Number 7, Superboy why he was awful. The initial incarnation of the character was, as you would expect from the name, namely a teenage Superman, fighting crime and righting wrongs while still living in Smallville with Ma and Pa Kent. Why is he so bad? Well, most likely it's down to the simple fact that he is a clearly derivative junior version of a popular character, and therefore completely and utterly unnecessary. How he was fixed. During the death of Superman and Reign of Superman storylines, a new Superboy was introduced, created by Carl Kessel. Initially referred to as The Kid, he soon took on the mantle of Superboy after successfully helping the real Kal-El foil a plot to destroy Metropolis. Number 6, Green Arrow. Why he was awful. Look, I adore Green Arrow, but hey, let's face it, when the character started, he was not exactly original. A millionaire playboy fighting crime as a vigilante at night? He has a car, plane, and KV users, both named after a superhero persona? Hmm, sounds familiar. In truth, there is no denying Green Arrow slash Oliver Queen was introduced initially as an Archer version of Batman. Kevin Smith even took the piss out of the whole thing in Green Arrow Quiver, which you should all go read. How he was fixed. 
The character's reinvention started with the artist Neil Adams, who, deciding to allow the Robin Hood background to inform the character's look even further, gave the character a goatee and a new costume. The same story had a more political tone, with Oliver Queen deciding whether he should give up his costume and instead use his substantial wealth to help people that way. The character became more radical in his views, certainly for the time, making him popular with college students too. He teamed up with Green Lantern in his title, pairing the newly minted left winger with the space cop straight man. This finally gave the character a newfound purpose. He was no longer a knockoff vigilante. He was now a character that mattered. Number five, Dick Grayson. Why he was awful. Dick Grayson, the first Robin, was introduced in 1940 as a young acrobat whose parents were killed during a performance while Bruce Wayne was in attendance. He takes the young boy under his wing and eventually adopts him, in the process taking him out to fight violent crime as a vigilante. It's no wonder this concept has proven so difficult to adapt to the darker themed Batman stories, even if I do personally prefer it involved. How he was fixed Dick Grayson was part of the Teen Titans setup since its conception in the 1960s, but it wasn't until the Judas Contract story in 19. 1984 that Grayson came back as Nightwing, a newly minted vigilante who, despite similarities to Batman, established himself as a fully-fledged all-out superhero himself. He steps in when Bruce Wayne isn't able to fulfill his duties as Batman. He first took over the mantle during the aftermath of the Nightfall saga where Bruce Wayne has his back broken by Bane. He then does so again after Wayne is killed during Batman Reborn. Number 4. Jason Todd Why he was awful Jason Todd was introduced in 1983 as the replacement of Dick Grayson as Robin. These were big booties to fill evidently after decades of stories with Dick as Batman's main sidekick, so despite the previous boy wonder sticking around for far longer, he was killed in 1988's death in the family storyline. He is the most short-lived Robin, however, and while his death was significant to Batman, there was something else about the event that makes it special. Readers actually voted to kill him off, even after he'd switched from being a Dick Grayson clone into a rebellious loner. How he was fixed. In 2005, Judd Winnick was writing a storyline entitled Under the Hood. This new Red Hood, however, was less theatrical and more tactical, a brutal vigilante that had no trouble using lethal force to take care of Gotham's criminals. Much better and more interestingly than another Robin, Jason Todd was now the failed apprentice, a walking reminder of Batman's previous failure not only to prevent his death, but to have killed the Joker long before that could have even taken place. Number 3. Animal Man why he was awful. Before 1986's Crisis on Infinite Earths, Animal Man had a grand total of 11 appearances since his conception in 1965. He teamed up with Wonder Woman in the 80s, but apart from that, was a D-list superhero at best. He had the power to take on the abilities of any animal, which is a conceivably very cool, if potentially poorly defined, ability to have. How he was fixed. After making a name for himself on independent British comics, Grant Morrison was asked to pitch for DC, and his pitches for Animal Man and Arkham Asylum, a serious house on a serious earth, were accepted. Morrison introduced the character of Buddy Baker, Animal Man, as an everyman in a superpowered world who, despite having powers himself, cared most of all about his family and, surprise, surprise, environmentalism. Number 2. Batwoman why she was awful. Both the pre-crisis and the current Batwoman is Catherine Kane, a wealthy heiress who fights crime. This is entirely where the similarities end. The original character was created in 1956 as a response to real-life villain Frederick Wortham, who had accused Batman and Robin of being a homosexual parable during a period where the public were convinced comics were the source of all of young America's ills. How she was fixed. Batwoman was reintroduced into DC continuity in 2006 as Kate Kane, a wealthy woman who also happens to have a background in the military. This Batwoman is every bit Batman's counterpart, protecting the city in his absence while he's presumed dead. She is certainly one of the more compelling characters in the Bat family and one of my favorite DC heroes, a leader in the truest sense and a fantastic symbol of LGBT representation in the DC universe. And number one, Sandman. Why he was awful. In the 70s, the Sandman was a superhero named Garrett Sanford who, along with two living nightmares, Brute and Glob, protected children's dreams from nightmares. He can enter the dream stream at will. Yes, the dream stream at will, which he can also control to an extent. He can also put people to sleep using his sand. How he was fixed. When Neil Gaiman began writing the title, he revealed that the real Sandman is Dream himself, Morpheus, the personification of the concept of dreaming. Without him, literally actually dreaming would not exist. He is the creator of all you have ever dreamt, sibling to death, desire, destiny, delirium, destruction, and despair. That's a lot of Ds. 
The character of Sandman propelled both Neil Gaiman and Vertigo, the adult publishing arm of DC, into prominence during the early 90s. Gaiman's Sandman is not only one of the best-selling comics of all time, but also an absolute watershed moment in comic book history, redefining forever what serious comics actually look like. The idea that Sandman was once a fourth-tier DC superhero is absolutely mind-boggling, and truly shows what a great reinvention can actually do. 